so yes, we're going to be talking about um, well, the the talk is billed as uh, electrocautery, but um, just to be clear, um, electrocautery is actually the wrong term. Um, so it's actually electrosurgery when we're talking about uh, use of um, snares and knives uh, in the colon. So electrosurgery, high frequency electrical currents. Uh, attacking the sort of biological tissue where, where the thermal effect is medically useful. Electrocautery is actually the term used to where you heat up a resistant metal electrode and typically this is the heater probe that we're, we're all familiar with. So we should be talking about electrosurgery. There's some really basic physics that you need to be aware of. In essence, uh, you're putting a uh, current uh, into the uh, patient which is driven by the voltage uh, the resistance to the flow of current is what generates heat, and this is what generates the desirable therapeutic, therapeutic effect uh, that we're looking for. And this diagram, and I need to shout out to uh, uh, Dr. Raju, he does really good um, uh, YouTube uh, talks on this, so I've lifted a lot of his uh, images because they're so fantastic. And this demonstrates the flow of current from the generator uh, through the snare, through the patient, and then back to the return electrode. If you've ever wondered why the return electrode doesn't heat up, it's all about surface area and current density. So obviously the, your snare is very small, so you get very high current density, so you get temperature going up. On the return electrode, it's very big, uh, very large surface area, low current density, therefore no uh, rise in temperature. Now, we touched on this briefly. Adolfo mentioned uh, the concept of a bipolar snare, and you might be wondering what the advantage of that is. So a monopolar snare, so that's what we're used to using um, in uh, the UK and Europe, and you need a return electrode for these. So it's a, it's a flow of uh, current from the um, polyp snare to the return electrode, and then back to the generator again. In a bipolar situation, such as a coag grasper, you only have current flowing between one arm of the uh, coag grasper uh, and the other. This requires a lower voltage because you're only going through a small amount of tissue. That makes it a lot safer. And you, most importantly, you don't get interference with uh, other electrical devices such as um, implantable defibrillators. Um, so bipolar is, is safer potentially uh, you're using lower voltage. So uh, this is what we're used to uh, looking at, obviously, with the uh, Irby. Uh, you'll notice it always says endocut Q. Just to give you a bit of background for that, uh, the Q, it, you'll have noticed that a snare is shaped like the capital letter Q. So that's where the Q comes from. You also get endocut I, uh, and you use those for knives or um, uh, needle knife sphincterotomy, for instance, in uh, ERCP. And really the one minute version of this talk is just use Endocut Q. The guys at uh, uh, Irby have thought all these things through. They're very happy. You just press the yellow pedal uh, and you go. Uh, but to go a little bit more uh, in depth, uh, it's important to be aware of the uh, effect that the energy has on tissue. So when you're doing coagulation, what coagulation does is it actually causes cellular dehydration and protein uh, denaturation, and that's what causes your coagulation. When you're cutting, uh, the temperatures are going up to and above 100 degrees centigrade, the cells will boil, uh, and that causes them to vaporize, and that's what causes cut. So there's a difference in the temperatures uh, and of course then the voltages uh, between the two uh, modes. So although we talk about cutting when we're cutting, it's actually, um, you get a blend of, of currents. There are different stages within the cycle. So you get an initial um, surge uh, when you're doing your initial incision, that causes a spark that allows you to cut into the tissue you then have a, a brief cutting phase, which is very high voltage, and then the voltage falls, the temperature falls, uh, and then you get that cellular dehydration, you get the coagulation phase uh, before you ping into 
another cutting phase. Um, and that's really important to know because if you tap the, um, uh, the yellow pedal, you're just going to constantly reset the machine. So when you put your foot on the pedal, the, your foot needs to stay on the pedal and then that will allow it to go through uh, the cycle of cutting and coagulation uh, appropriately. Okay, so let's say you do want to know a little bit more uh, about what the different numbers mean. Uh, now I've already said to you, just stick with EndoCutQ, it's fine. You don't necessarily need to know this stuff, um, but I think it is useful just to be aware of why they're there. So you'll see effect, you'll see cut duration, and you'll see cut interval. So let's talk about those one by one. So the effect refers to the coagulation effect. Uh, there's four settings. Setting one, there is no coagulation, so you're getting pure cuts. Setting four, you're getting maximum uh, coagulation effect. It will often be set to setting three. Cut duration does what it says on the tin. Uh, if you're on setting one, you have a very brief cutting duration, so you're going to get a relatively uh, slower cut, whereas on setting four, you, you can see the cut duration is prolonged, so you're going to get a faster cut. And obviously there's dangers to that if you're cutting through uh, too quickly, uh, nobody wants to slice through a large stalk polyp uh, too quickly. And then finally, cut interval. So again, this is pretty obvious, this is the amount of time uh, between one cutting um, uh, episode and the next. So for a lower number, uh, you can have very relatively brief coagulation phases as compared to the higher numbers. Right, just to talk a little bit now uh, about the difference in coags. So this, I'm now switching to the blue side of the screen. Uh, you've got three options. You've got soft coag, forced coag, and swift coagulation. Swift coagulation, I want you to ignore. Uh, your Erby generator is not just designed for endoscopy. We don't use swift coagulation in endoscopy. Mostly when you're taking a polyp off, it will be under forced coagulation. And you can see from the diagrams to the left uh, that that's relatively high voltage. You're putting a lot of energy in. Soft coag, and this is what you uh, saw from some of the videos being applied, it's lower voltage. Uh, you're getting a slower cooking of the tissue, that's going to make it much safer uh, to use. And you're usually using this for hemostasis or for uh, trying to reduce your risk of a recurrent adenoma. We're just going to run a video now and uh, we've seen this already, but just talk, uh, this is me demonstrating the technique of using soft coag. Large sessile polyp has been taken off on block, a little bit uncertain about the edges, so all I'm doing is I'm going from uh, position to position on the circumference of the uh, defect. And what I will have asked my nurses to do is to switch from force coag uh, to soft coag. If I was using force coag, there's a much greater risk of causing charring, uh, the snare can stick, and obviously my anxiety is I'm going to be transmitting more energy into uh, a defect, and that's you know potentially risky uh, if you're on the right side of the colon. Just briefly to say, of course, it's not just about the generator. There are also other variables, such as your user technique and the uh, size of the polyp that you're removing. Just a couple of points on this. Um, in a large stalked polyp, you're going to potentially have large blood vessels going up the center of the stalk. It used to be a fashion that we used to give pre-coag, so we would switch the blue pedal, we'd burn a bit, and then we'd go on to uh, the yellow pedal to endocut Q to cut through. Now, if you think about it, that makes no sense. If you're coagging just the, the periphery uh, of the stalk, you're not going to tackle those big vessels. So much makes much more sense just to use uh, endocut Q throughout the uh, polyp resection. The other uh, anxiety is getting a counter burn on the opposite wall of the polyp. Now again, this is where we go back to current density. If only a tiny bit of the polyp is touching the opposite wall, then you run the risk of delivering energy uh, to there in a, in a high current density 
and then you can get a burn which could result in a perforation. If a large amount of the polyp uh, is touching the opposite wall, you get a broad area of contact, you get low current density, you get no damage. So if you're in a situation where you can't manipulate the polyp into the lumen, you're actually much better off ensuring that there's a broad area of contact of the polyp head on the opposite wall rather than just a little bit. So to summarize, endocut Q, very important. People remember it's a blend of cut and coag. User technique is crucial for safe uh, polypectomy. And my general advice is don't mess with the settings. You know, the, the, this has all been thought through. Endocut Q is very safe. But I think it is important to know what the other numbers mean, just so you understand them on the rare times you might need to uh, adjust them.